Um, my top tip from him yesterday was... What is up everyone and welcome back to another F6 weekly vlog. So, it is Monday today. We've had obviously a weekend of an absolute washout of football. No games anywhere. Um, I picked up a game Saturday, called off. Picked up a game Sunday, called off. So, for us, it's Tuesday is our next game. And it's Millwall under 21s versus Colchester under 21s at the Den. So at Millwall's uh, first team stadium. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to this. Today is Monday. I'm going into Ref6 HQ. I've done a push session today. Um, so it's all about gearing up for tomorrow. I'm very excited. It's a busy week as well because I've actually got another game Thursday and a game Saturday. So it's all about staying fit, staying healthy as doing as much as I humanly can to stay in the best shape as always. But come along for what will be an unbelievable vlog um, at the first team stadium, my first EFL stadium, and I'm very much looking forward to it. So come along for the journey and I'll catch you tomorrow for what will be match day at the Den. Okay, so it's kit bag check time. So there's a few little added things in uh, the kit bag today, just due to the fact that it's midweek game and I'm trying to prepare a little bit better um, and I've got work, so there's a little bit of like work stuff in there. So here is what I'm bringing to a midweek game at Millwall for the under 21s development league. I think that's what it's called, professional development league. Starting off with some boring stuff a towel for my boots, water bottle, um, whatever this is, a power bank for my phone, um, tablets, spare boxes, towel, the boots of choice today, big boots for a big occasion, obviously. Um, two pairs of socks, Nike socks, true socks. Warm-up stuff, which is one mid-layer, one normal top. Um, the yellow one needs replacing, I think. I think I'm going to have to buy the new kit. Um, under short, under shorts, under shirt, shorts, two tops. The new one and then the old one, just in case the other liner doesn't have it and will match. Wash kit. Um, this is a little pad for work, which will go here with my work laptop. My crime sheets, just in case the referee needs them. My box of tricks and a... Uh, what's that called? A wash bag, a, like dirty washing bag, as well as my bag with my spare boots in it as well. So we're gonna pack all of this stuff up nice and quickly, and then head off for pre-match meal because I'm that's gonna be the last thing I eat for the simple reason that um, the game's at one fifteen. It feels like a little bit like the Guernsey game where I'm gonna eat at random times and then hopefully have some gels, which reminds me I do need to pick one up from my magic store stash. It is cherry today so that should hopefully keep me going and Mill have said in the pre-match sort of briefing that there's food available so fingers crossed but for now pack this stuff up and pre-match <laughs> Okay, so I have eight minutes left. As you can see, I'm basically ready. Uh, black top, black trousers, um, nice solid arms. When the times get tough, we make baked beans. So it's baked beans, toast and cheese. And you're probably thinking, John, hot sauce, of course. So it's quite a simple meal. It takes, I don't know, two minutes in terms of cooking toast and cooking beans and a little bit of cheese it's, it's literally nothing it takes no time at all it's comfort food it, i know it's going to keep me very fueled up so um i have also a little sandwich whether i eat that i probably will uh, when i get to the ground so like i said i'm getting there early for the simple reason that i can do a little bit of work so i'm trying to incorporate work and the day so it's a little bit stressful at the front end of the day but it should sort of by the time I get there, I should have plenty of time, you know, an hour and a bit on the train. I should have plenty of time to get going, basically. So, I'm going to eat this up, and then I'm getting a lift to the station. Um...
Okay, so hello. So as you can see, I'm back in my car. Um, so basically, I left my car at the station and I got the train, like I said I was. Um, so I'm back. And the reason I'm now doing it in my car is because I've got so many thoughts rattling around in my head. And I couldn't do it on the train because it was absolutely ramo. And as much as I give it the big ones about me trying to pretend to be a big time, I wasn't doing it on a full train. Uh, so here are my uh, match, pre-match, post-match thoughts. So... In terms of the game, uh, very interested. The players are very smart, um, and this is my hot takes. Um, in terms of how they delay the game, how they play the game, the way they see the game as well, like their ping and passes left, right and centre, their touch is almost phenomenal. These are under-21 players now, so they are potentially first-year, second-year, third-year pros. Um, you know, they've been playing football a long time, and they are very good footballers at that. Um, in terms of the referee, the only way I would describe him is almost as if the FA plucked something out of their book in terms of the perfect referee. Um, his signals were immaculate. His The way he moved around the pitch was immaculate. He's probably the right height as well, which is about six foot two. Um, really nice guy. Had a little bit of an ego about him in a good way, though, because um, I've been trying to figure out how to phrase this uh, without making him sound bad because I think the word ego and referee um, gets a bit of a like negative connotation and I don't think I think he needed the ego today to compete with the egos around but his ego was like yeah I can um, do the job and you know I'm good enough and I'm ready to be here you know sort of like a strong personality I don't know if that's ego or not but I really liked it um, and he was a nice guy to work with very clear very like concise about what we want what he expected from us um and i'm going to talk about it more tomorrow but i thought the way he went about things at the start was something i've not seen before but actually um really helpful so when i debrief the game tomorrow um you know these are just my hot takes now when i debrief the game tomorrow um i'll go into that in more detail because realistically that's almost a game changer for me in terms of working with the skippers um so yeah um, in terms of the game, it was very wet. Uh, I got very, very wet and it's very cold. So for the first half, I thought, oh, I wasn't so good because I was concentrating so much on trying to fill my hands again because I haven't been in the rain in the cold yet. Uh, but the second half, I was much more switched on and much more on it. But very much enjoyed the day. Loved that atmosphere. It gives you a little bit of a taste of you know, the next step. So for me, like I'm never going to ref Millwall in the next couple of years, like the actual first team at the den. So for me, it's carry on doing these games and it gives me a little taste of, I want to ref those games because I've come off the game thinking there wasn't a lot to do for him um, and he managed it well, uh, but it gives me that taste of, I want that. So that's been my hot takes back in my car. Um, but tomorrow I will go for a full debrief just for the simple fact that I want to close the game off before I have another one of these games on Thursday. So it's a very hot topic at the moment. Um, you know, I'm very busy. It's going to be a long week, but, you know, we're looking forward to it. So, yeah, I look forward to catching you tomorrow. Hello, everyone. So it is Wednesday today, um, and I am obviously back at Ref6 HQ from the Millwall game. So I have a day's recovery. Um, which is today, so I've cycled into work, that's all I've done. I woke up this morning quite tired, um, so I've got a day's recovery before we go again tomorrow, uh, but that will be next week's vlog, um, so keep an eye out for that. So in terms of the Millwall game, how I found it, um, let's go over some basic stuff first. So my stats are here, and as you can see, I ran 5.69k, which is a lot more than I thought it was going to be. Um, I ran 2.5k in the first half and 3.1 in the second half. Um, which is rather interesting actually because I didn't feel like I worked that hard but it's one of my highest if not the highest line I've done this season um, and that contributes quite simply down to the speed of the game I think I spent a lot of time going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards following play when the centre halves play they drop either really deep to recycle the ball make an option or they're darting up to the halfway line so you're very much on the move um, and that was quite interesting. So it was hard to, especially in the first half, because it was wet and cold, concentration was, I found very difficult for me. Um, it's for, like I said yesterday, it's the first one back in the rain. And, um, you know, it just wasn't, probably wasn't at my best. Okay, I had two tight offsides to make. We haven't got the footage. Like one, first goal, was it offside? No. Second goal, was it offside? No. Um, the referee did well in terms of game management. Like I said yesterday, I thought he was almost like 
if the FA were going to draw a referee, it would have been this guy. Every decision, it was, you know, a perfect arm signal and a perfect whistle tone at every stage. You know, sometimes a whistle tone needs to be more aggressive when it's a yellow card free kick and just sort of like a, not a wispy whistle, uh, but a different type of whistle when it's a more serious free kick. And I thought he nailed that as well as um, my top tip from him yesterday was that he wore, when the captains come out, usually we introduce ourselves in terms of, oh, um, what are you doing? You know, how's, it, how's things going? You know, shake hands, what's your name? Usually we already know their names, but he actually said, what position do you play? And I thought, interesting, like why? And, you know, the more you think about it, he goes, all oh, right, okay, perfect. So we'll be able to talk in the middle. That's absolutely fine. The other guy was a centre half. And he was like, look, I'll let you get back into position. I know you're a centre half. And I thought, wow, actually, instantly he's got players on side because they know that he, they can talk to him um, in an open manner and, you know, get back into position without feeling rushed. And that calms everything down because they don't feel rushed. So I thought that was really interesting and something I'm definitely going to take away with me um, in my later games. So Mill ended up winning 5-1, um, which is funny because I had Mill's defensive half um, in the second half and ended up running more because they were playing a quick line. Um, as you can see from my sprint map, there were quite a few sprints. There's a nice big orange one straight across the pitch at the end where we've got to dart to the referee and get inside because it was cold. Um, but in terms of the game, it's great to be involved in it. It's a bit of a weird one because there's no real crowd, so the stadium's empty, it feels a bit eerie, but the players are a lot better. Uh, they're a lot more, they're quicker, they're stronger. These guys train every day and their touch is perfect, like I said yesterday. Um, but in terms of the actual day, what an enjoyable day, you know, it gives you that taste of a little bit more and I thought the referee was good. He gave two penalties in the end and four yellow cards, um, all spot on, I think. And the other guy on the other line, Teddy, is a new level four as well. He says he does these games quite a lot. Um, and I think he's quite lucky because I thought they were class. Um, and it's like a London bus. I haven't had one all season and then I get two in a week. So for the rest of the day, um, it's 12 o'clock now. I'm going to have my lunch. I'm going to chill out. I'm just going to make sure that my legs are in good shape for tomorrow because I don't really want to train again for the simple reason that... We had this a couple of weeks ago, I had two games in two days, and by the Friday I was cream crackered. Um, so I've obviously got a game on Saturday as well, So and that's a middle, so I'm very much focusing on that. Um, but so far, so good. Really enjoyed the day. Gives me a real taste of what I want, to, you know, my next step is get a couple more of them at, you know, the stadiums, tick off a few stadiums, um, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, um, move on and you know, referee one of them. Because I feel like I could referee that. There wasn't a lot to manage. The speed is quicker, which I think I have. Um, no disrespect to the referee. I thought the referee did well. I just think I could do that kind of game. Um, there wasn't anything really where he thought he was standout or the game was standout enough to be like, you know, that needed a 2B. Um, there was no real crowd. There was no real occasion. You just have to deal with a lot of extra stuff like getting to the ground a little bit earlier, safety checks those kind of things, which is part and parcel of being on at the EFL. Like that, that's, that's not like judgment on your level. So yeah, I feel like I could have done that and managed the team, but you know, and then the next target is now to referee one of them games. So yeah, I am going to chill out for the rest of the day and I will speak to you tonight when I'm home to close off the vlog to see how I'm feeling, but another great day in the office. So that is the end of another weekly vlog. We go again at Charlton. I'm very much looking forward to that one as well. So please like and subscribe and I will see you next week at Charlton for the next Ref6 weekly vlog. See ya.